terrorizes people and dogs, but becomes paralyzed when thunderstorms strike. That's pretty major. Fleetwood flees any chance he gets. Fleetwood, come here! And joins Sonny in a chorus of incessant barking. Sons Hunter and Brandon have had enough. And my mom definitely spoils the dogs. And blame their parents for the chaos. They really didn't train him that well. Can Victoria rebuild this broken family? There is a problem. You have added to that problem. Or are the wounds too deep to heal? This is an absolute disaster. Victoria Stillwell has nearly 14 years of experience training dogs on both sides of the Atlantic. Today, she's on her way to help a family of four being divided by their two dogs. When you have a hypersensitive dog, you have to do everything you can to help that dog cope. Forcing a dog into a situation that makes it uncomfortable could stress it out even more, and that could make the condition a lot worse. Hi, I'm Gail. I live with my husband, JB, my two teenage sons, Brandon and Hunter, and my two wild papillons. Shut up! Sometimes they'll do what you tell them, but 90% of the time, they just pretend like they don't even hear what you're saying. <laughs> my mom definitely spoils the dogs. She and Sonny are basically inseparable. Since getting the dogs, it's become extremely loud and chaotic. Before she begins her training process, Victoria will spend a day observing the family and hearing about their concerns. Fleetwood's gonna take off. Get him, get him. Oh my gosh! Oh, come Fleetwood, come here! Fleetwood! Get in the house. Come here. When I arrived at JB and Gail's house, they knocked on the door, they opened it, and out shot what I saw to be a little papillon. And he was gone. Fleetwood! Sit down! Fleetwood! I had to run to stop a car so that Fleetwood. if he'd run over the road, he wouldn't get run over. Hi. Hi. I'm just worried about that car. Fleetwood. You gotta pee, grab him. Pee? Grab while peeing. Thank God he had to pee. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Victoria. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh. JP. I see. Hey. Good to meet I'm you, glad to have you. Yeah, I need to be here, I think. Yes. Okay. I'm glad Victoria got to see that whole thing because that's the biggest problem that we have with Fleetwood. Having finally wrangled Fleetwood back into the house, JB and Gail show Victoria the results of keeping the dogs indoors during the day. They tore up the sheetrock. They the... chewed through the sheetrock here? Yeah, they were like that deep. They we like put it. plaster back in. They get it wet, and then they chew it. They're like beavers. You have baby gates everywhere. Well, that's, the, that's where we put them when we go to work. Both dogs have chewed and, of course, a lot of damage in the house. And that is because they were left by their owners for 10 hours a day. So what do they expect? For two small dogs, there's a lot of damage. With Victoria on hand, Gail's sons, Brandon and Hunter, are eager to vent their frustrations about the dogs as well. They really didn't train them that well and we really can't do anything with them socially like we can't take them for a walk or we can't have people come over it's extremely frustrating because you know i'll come home and have a bad day at school and i'll be like come here fleetwood and he'll just walk the other direction it's very tense ground with them hmm. when someone goes to pet sunny i mean we she, we stand the risk of having her snap at us or even bite us i mean she's bitten me a few times has she bitten you uh, she snapped at me. I definitely don't really want to bring friends over because, you know, Sunny, she, she snaps at people. Do you think your mom spoils the dogs? De definitely. It's always, Sunny, get one to catch. And she's always she's having her right next to her. And Well, we'll see what I can do. Yes. To show Victoria how little control their mom has over the dogs, the boys ask Victoria to join them on a walk. They'll snap their neck and They'll bite people and they'll charge. And, I mean, and they'll go under our legs and we may step on them and hurt them or something may come at them and they'll just charge them and then get hurt and it's all a mess. And this is our friend and we'd love to be able to walk with him. But we can't. This is, so I can't. 
can't, you know, we can't even have much of a social life with them. We can't walk with our friends' dogs. How long has it been since you walked them? I think I tried to walk them about four months ago. Four months ago? Yes. Quitting walking your dogs because you can't handle them at the other end of the leash is totally inexcusable in my eyes. Do you wonder why then that they get a little stir crazy? We throw the ball a lot in right. the house. Right. We do a lot of that stuff. She said she plays ball with them inside the house and that's enough. Well, it's not at all. The dogs need to be outside. If she wants their behavior to improve inside the house, she's got to get them out. But while Sunny is a terror on the street, inside the house, she becomes paralyzed with fear when a thunderstorm rolls in. And we've got some home movie. Okay. She's just shaking and hiding. And then she runs back and forth under the chair or to a little box she's got or back under the sewing machine. And she would get so scared. Mm -hmm. she, we can't get her out. She won't eat. She won't drink any water. Now she's she really can't. shaking. Yeah. If she can't rest, she'll go from one hiding spot to another. Wow. That's pretty major. Pretty major reaction. She's definitely experiencing thunderstorm phobia. She's shaking, she's pacing, she can't settle. She tries to go underneath furniture to get away, and she'll do that until the thunderstorm passes. Victoria gets to see some of Sunny's nervous behavior for herself when Gail takes both the dogs for a rare visit with family at her mother's house. Hey! Come on, come in. As soon as Sunny and Fleetwood saw this dog, all hell broke loose. I'm Victoria. Hi. Hello. Hi. Nice Hi. to Nancy. meet you. And you are? Danielle. Hello. Sky. Hi. Hi. And your grandma? Julia. Hi. Hi. Jeanette. Hi. And this is, who is this? Gina. Oh. oh, goodness me. I was a little sad that my cousins were so scared of my dogs. I love my cousins, and I hardly ever get to see them. When was the last time Gail came with her dogs? She hadn't been here but like twice with them, and it's been at least two years. Oh, has it? That long? Well, the first time she came, one of them snapped at my granddaughter. I'm not surprised in the least that Sunny's bitten a few other people as well. She doesn't like people coming up to her and trying to touch her. She doesn't gel well with people at all. She's scared of them. She fears them. And then, you know, we just keep them confined in here, and it's you can't have a conversation. You saying she she wants that dog. She wants to get Anna. Anna's Anna's hey, come here, my love. Sunny was trying to get away from me to go and get that dog. She was out of her mind, obsessed, totally out of control. You you're all family. Yes, sir. And do you see each other a lot? No. Yeah. And I miss being able to hang with the boys and play. Yeah, it's fun to play with them and we haven't been able to. So they're your cousins, Hunter and Brandon. You can't hang out with them. Mm. Right. The family really wants Sunny to be a friendly dog, to be able to take her everywhere and for her not to react badly to other dogs or other people. But at the moment, there is no way that Sunny can function correctly in a social situation. Coming up. Victoria lays down the law for Gail and JB. What you've been doing with the dogs it has made the problem worse. And later, JB struggles to keep Fleetwood's attention. Sorry, but you're boring. <laughs> Victoria Stillwell has spent a day observing Gail and JB's hyperactive and hypersensitive dogs. Now, she sits down to sort through their issues. The situation has got out of control. Specifically with Sunny, you have a dog whose behavior goes far beyond just a normal dog being fearful. Wow, that behavior at your mother's house? Oh my God, that was the worst I have ever seen, Sunny. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, Sunny's behavior rubs off on Fleetwood. Oh, he yeah. joins in. <laughs> but we can't. This is... The problem with hyperactive, fearful dogs is that they are always anticipating threat. It's a relief to know that it's not all our bad management. Yeah, 
there is a problem, but you have added to that problem. By giving up on the walking, you're doing a lot of damage to your dogs. No wonder Fleetwood wants to dash out the door and he doesn't come back to you. Secondly, you're calling him, Fleetwood, come, come here now. Are you gonna come over to me or are you gonna run away? Yeah, I'm gonna run away. Exactly. The kids would love to be able to bond with your dogs, but they can't. Sonny's too attached to you. I think I want you to have realistic expectations out of this. And the training that I'm going to be giving you is going to require a lot of commitment. And it's not something that you can do just while I'm here or a couple of months after I've gone. It's got to be for life. Well, I am totally on board with what Victoria said. We'll definitely stick with it. Are you ready? Ready. Yeah. Let's do it. I am so relieved that we are starting the training. I have had enough of my dogs acting crazy. But before Gail sees a change in her dogs, she has a lot of hard work ahead of her, especially with Sunny. I want to do some people socializing with Sunny, but we have to go very, very slowly with this. The first step in the socialization process is to get Sunny more comfortable around people who come into her home. This dog is always anticipating threat. And that's why, even here, she knows that there's somebody out the door, outside. She knows, and she's uncomfortable. So she adopts what she's doing now, this defensive gesture. Working with a dog that is hyperactive and hypersensitive and hypervigilant is very difficult, because they have less of an ability to learn. Rather than Gail picking Sunny up, Victoria now wants Sunny to be kept on a leash when new people enter the house. I want to teach her that people coming in are not a threat. But it's really important that you also teach your guests what to do with her. OK. Previously, any people that Sunny has met have given her eye contact, have talked to her, have tried to touch her, and it's too much pressure. She hates it. So I have a friend of yours, Victoria, great name, outside, and I would like you to tell Victoria could you please just completely ignore Sunny? I get very nervous when new people come in because Sunny charges them and acts like she's going to bite them. There you go. Okay. The most important thing Gail's got to do is to tell her guests to completely ignore Sunny because the more they try and interact with Sunny, the more Sunny reacts towards them. Victoria, this is Victoria. Hey, nice to meet you. So she's doing her thing, she's barking away. Sit here. Okay, there. Now, it's really important that your guests don't put pressure on Sunny, because this allows Sunny to be able to investigate the guest. And you can see she's smelling her, and she's getting information about her. And also, immediately a connection's going to be made. Okay. And this is, and she's gonna see this, see? She's gonna see this person as not a threat. Right. She's gonna go away from the person, then she's gonna come back. She's gonna sniff a little bit more. She's gonna go away again. She's gonna come back, sniff a little bit more. <coughs> so when she barks like that, you have to ignore her too. Okay. And I don't care if you have to sit here for 15 minutes and she's barking, right? You just totally ignore that behavior. She gets nothing. After five solid minutes without any reaction from Gail, Sunny eventually loses steam. You see the barking only starts to get a little lower. Yes. Now she's under control. It was wonderful to have Sunny calm down in front of my guests. My friends are going to be relieved to know that Sunny is making progress. Now, what you do is then you give your guest mm -hmm. some food. Now, Victoria, if you keep your hand open, just put a bit of food there, she'll eat the food out of your hand. Good girl. Good girl. Lovely. All right, so now you give the guest a toy. Oh. Now, not only is the guest delivering food, the guest is also delivering a toy. 
Good. Oh, good girl. Good, lovely. Yeah, nice. That's validation from you. When you're calm, I give you attention. And you're praising her for that. You're giving her confidence. You're saying having calm behavior around the guest is a good thing. Good girl. Coming up. Victoria wants the boys to bond with their dogs, but Sonny and Fleetwood have other ideas. Where are you going? This is an absolute disaster. You must ignore her. Victoria has begun the long road towards socializing Sonny with visitors at home. Now she takes the training a step further. It's one thing in the home, but outside the home, it's a different deal. We're going to have to get her accustomed to dogs. But I also want to get her accustomed to people walking past as well. You have to be there to take her away if she barks at the people coming up. Okay. But if she does and she focuses on me, she gets the treat. Victoria has asked Gail's cousins Danielle and Skylar to help out with the training. I'm a little worried about this part of it. Children have been such a problem for Sunny. I'm just going to see them. Enough. When Sunny did react badly, I got up, took away from the situation. Enough. <laughs> Sit. Up, up. Victoria repeats the process for nearly 10 minutes, only returning when Sunny is calm. Oh, what a good girl. Lovely. Nice. I'm flooding her brain with pleasurable endorphins as these girls are walking past. Now Victoria has the girls approach again, but this time with treats in hand. Sit. Good girl. Wait. Throw, throw food. Nice. At this point, I wanted her to see that the girls bought good things for her. Good girl. Look at that. Good girl, lovely, lovely. Seeing her like this, what do you think of her now? She seems very relaxed. It'll be fun to visit Cousin Gail again and have her come over. What a girl. It was a huge difference. I didn't feel scared sitting by her this time or walking by her. I thought she was pretty good. Oh, this is wonderful. This yeah. is the better than I'd hoped for. Yeah. Having reunited Gail with her extended family, now Victoria wants to work on how the immediate family relates to the dogs. The boys don't have the best relationships with their dogs, so I want to show them some ways that they can improve that relationship. I'm going to give you these toys. I want you to play with that toy with Sunny and that toy with Fleetwood. If you do want more of a relationship with these dogs, then you are going to have to help out, because otherwise the dogs are going to tune you out. I don't really have a bond with Sunny and Fleetwood. They're kind of distant. And that's one thing I would like Victoria's help with. Just walk around this area with them. Despite the boys' attempts, Sunny and Fleetwood aren't interested in forming any friendships. Yeah, she wants to go back to mother. Where are you going? Fleetwood. It's just a good... No. Come on, Sunny. Sunny has issues. Sunny. Oh, poor, don't, don't drag. A lot of issues. This is an absolute disaster. With toys not keeping the dog's attention, Victoria adds something of higher value. Now I want you to take the treat, put it in front of your dog's nose, and then say, watch me. I want you to do it like this. Sunny, watch me. Watch me. Good girl. Quick like that. And if you build that word up, they're going to fly over to you. Sunny. Back, back. Sunny, watch me. Go, go. Watch me. Let him have some treats. Good, nice. Nice, Brandon. Very good. The dogs definitely require a lot more effort. I think it'll not only help make us all happier, but it may actually bring us closer together. Nice, Brandon. Very good. Good boy. Victoria now turns her attention to one of Sunny's worst nightmares, thunderstorms. From what I saw of Sunny's reaction, she's definitely experiencing thunderstorm phobia. She's shaking, she's pacing, she can't settle. 
I want to show the family a couple of things that they can do and use on Sunny to help her cope. Now I have an audio recording of a thunderstorm. I like to start the sound off at a very, very low level. But then something good happens to the dog as it hears it. And that's either lots of petting, or lots of praise, or playing with the toy. I would like to see Victoria try and help Sonny become less sensitive to the noise. That's gonna be a big step. With the sound on low, Sonny immediately takes notice. And as the volume increases, Sunny becomes even more agitated. I see. It's a little loud for her. I got to a level on the speaker that Sunny finally couldn't handle. So I turned it right back down again. OK, now I'd like to get out the toy. OK. There you go, because she could hear that. <gasps> oh, <I think> <gasps> Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Gail was playing with the toy with Sonny. She was listening because I could see her ears and her eyes and look, look at the speaker. But uh, her mind was still on the toy. With the toy holding Sonny's attention, Victoria hopes to eventually desensitize her to the increasing volume. That was a pretty good rumble there. It makes a lot of sense we've got to condition Sonny to the sounds to help her get used to it. I think over time it'll help a lot. And if it takes you months, fine, do it. This is the perfect time to do it. OK. In addition, Victoria has a few other tools to help Sunny cope when a storm rolls in. And it's not just the sounds of the thunderstorm. It's the, the, the changes in barometric pressure, which we know dogs feel. It's the possible buildup of static electricity. And that's why she paces, and that's why she's trying to find a place to hide. This is a wrap that goes around the dog, and they feel even more secure because it's just a little closer. The wrap that I use is specially designed to lessen a dog's anxiety, so it feels safe. The second thing is using an anti-static sheet that you put into the dryer, and you just rub your dog down with it. You can tell, Sonny, you can feel electricity because the hair will, st will stand up a little bit. So it's completely logical that the anti-static dryer sheets will work. This is a dog appeasing pheromone, and you plug it in, and that gives the dog a feeling of calm. The other thing that's really important is that if there's a favorite place that your dog likes to go to in a thunderstorm, make a little den-like area in that place and put rubber matting down if there's a carpet, so that if there is static, then the rubber matting cuts that up, cuts that down. Right. Try and make it a place that has no windows, or shut your blinds so you don't see the flashes. All right. Coming up, Victoria has some harsh words for JB. Sorry, but you're boring. Victoria has been working to make Sunny more comfortable in social situations. Mm -mm. She gets nothing for that. Now, she wants to address JB's terrible communication with Fleetwood, which has led to more than one dangerous situation. Fleetwood! Fleetwood! I think one of the reasons why Fleetwood is dashing out of the door is because he doesn't get out as much. There's a lot out here that's very stimulating. Then you come along and you ask to get him back. Fleetwood! Fleetwood, treat, treat! Fleetwood! You call him and he completely refuses. Well, absolutely, because sorry, but you're boring. All right. JB doesn't really have a relationship with Fleetwood. He doesn't come to JB when he's called because he has no reason to. You have to become part of the game. I'm going to teach you a recall. Until Fleetwood is responding to JB on a regular basis, Victoria wants him to use a long leash. So here is where we begin to, to change the picture. So allowing your dog to experience outside like this, so important. Now. <gasps> Love squeaky toys. Good boy. What's that? What's that? What's that? Now you begin to play. Good boy. Now you make things different. Oh. Now you are going to be in charge of the squeaky ball. Bringing something fun that really motivates the dog increases an owner's value in that dog's eyes. I want you to get the ball, and then I want you to run away from him and say, yeah. come. OK, now go away from him. 
Good boy. That's it. Now run and say come. 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 That's it. Come. Good. Now throw the ball for him. Good. Good boy. Good boy, Fleetwood. So you have to increase your value in his eyes. When I was running back and forth, I enjoyed it because I want Fleetwood to, you That's know, be it. a regular dog and not have to be stuck inside all the time. You're actually forming a relationship with your dog. The training is going to be difficult for JB because he doesn't have a lot of natural energy or enthusiasm, but he's got to find it within himself so he can build up a better relationship with Fleetwood. Along with his one-on-one -on -one time with JB, Victoria also wants Fleetwood to get out on more regular walks. The dogs are chewing because they're being left at home all day and because they're completely bored. Sunny and Fleetwood need to be walked separately for now because they need to become comfortable around other dogs before they walk together. This is lovely. He feels the wind in his hair. Yeah, he's had fun now. Yeah. And he doesn't miss Sonny at all. Fleetwood didn't even act like he knew Sonny when he went on the walk. He was just uh, having a good time by himself. But the real test comes when a neighbor approaches. Say hi. Good. Good boy. All right. This is better. Not one little bark, not one little lunge, nothing. All right. It was Smell the dog, off I go. You can see how Sonny eggs him on. Yeah. Turns him into a different dog. <laughs> I think Fleetwood is nervous of other dogs, but I think the situation is made a lot worse by Sonny being there and antagonizing him. Good, Fleetwood. Good boy. Nice. Now that she knows Fleetwood can handle a walk on his own, Victoria has the monumental task of making Sonny just as relaxed. We are going to attempt to walk Sunny with some other dogs. It's going to be a long road socializing Sunny and getting her comfortable. Walking her by herself, because of course with Fleetwood, that's double the trouble. I'm a little scared about Victoria wanting Sunny to walk with the other dogs, because Sunny is so anxious and aggressive towards other dogs. Victoria has asked a neighbor to pass by with her dog while she attempts to keep Sunny's focus. I don't want to pull her away. We're going to walk. Sunny was lunging and barking at the other dog because she was so uncomfortable. But I wanted to use a flooding process to show her, you know what? If you walk by this dog, nothing is going to happen to you. I'm just basically allowing her to be within the sight of the stimulus and close to the stimulus, making her feel like she has to react. But I want to show her, you know, that actually nothing bad's going to happen to her at all. This is a very nice, good girl. Good girl. Whenever Sunny is calm, she gets praise and a treat. So I always do either a parallel, or if, if the dog can't take even a, a visual of the face, I do a, a follow walk. OK. So the dog is only following the bottom. OK. Not the bitey end. Good, Sunny girl. Nice. Very oh my impressed. Gosh. There's no excuse now not to walk these dogs. They need to have social interaction. They need to have the experience of meeting and walking with other dogs. Otherwise, they will continue to be reactive. Before Victoria leaves the family to continue the training on their own, she has a few last words of advice. So I want you to work on the dog's socialization, especially Sunny. Walk the dogs. You're walking them separately. JB, for you to walk Fleetwood, and for you, Gail, to walk Sunny. JB, I'd like you to work with recall, and I'd like you to get the boys involved. I will. Yeah. I wish Victoria was staying a little bit longer. It doesn't seem like it's been long enough. I know Sunny is going to test you without a doubt, because she's a tough dog. But I don't want you to give up. OK? All right. Good luck, and I will be back. All, All right, right. Bye. bye. Bye bye. They've seen that the training works. They've seen massive progress. And if they want to keep that progress going, they have to work. Coming up, with Victoria gone, Sonny tries Gail's patience. <laughs> so I want you to work on the dog's socialization, especially Sonny. Victoria Stillwell has left JB and Gail for a few days to continue training on their own. Since she's been gone, Hunter and Brandon have stepped up and made an attempt to improve their relationship with the dogs. <laughs> no. Good boy. Sunny and Fleetwood are definitely more relaxed than they usually are. Watch me. Girl. 
they're really kind of turning into the dogs that I hoped they were and not the dogs that they were before Victoria showed up. Good boy watches me. Hunter's also been helping Gail desensitize Sonny to the sound of thunder. Come here, turn it down. That was too much, wasn't it? She's getting more used to it and realizing it's not gonna, not gonna kill her. Good girl, Sonny, good girl. Later that day, JB takes Fleetwood outside for a walk. I'm proud of how far Fleetwood's come with walking. He wasn't too stressed, and he seemed like he was having a pretty good time there. That's closer than he's ever walked alongside somebody's dog. Later in the week, Victoria checks in. Let's see how Gail and JB have been doing since I left them. Come here, Fleetwood. Today, JB and the boys are practicing recall training with Fleetwood. You got to try to get him to come over to you. Fleetwood, turn around. Fleetwood, come on, come on. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Ah, good. Come here. That was good. Well done, JB. The more you do this, the more valuable you'll become in Fleetwood's eyes, and he'll start responding to you on a regular basis. OK, come on. Good. Meanwhile, Gail works with Sonny, socializing her to people outside. Oh, good job. As her friends walk by, they toss Sonny some treats. Yay! Chicken from heaven. Good girl. Good girl. It's so nice to see Sunny not lashing out at your friends. Slowly, she'll learn to associate people with only good things. With Sunny showing signs of improvement, Gail has invited her mother to the house so she can work on Sunny's social skills inside the home. Come in! Gail, remember, I said do this only with Sunny. Having Fleetwood in the room is going to complicate the situation. Gail, why are you not answering the door yourself? You should be allowing Sonny to meet the people at the front door before they go to the living room. Don't look out. Don't look out. Sonny just continued to bark. The ignoring didn't seem to be working very well. Impatient with Sonny's barking, Gail decides to change course. When Victoria was working with Sonny outside, Victoria would remove Sonny from the situation when she was barking. Good, quiet dog. Ah! And that worked so well outside that I decided to bring it inside with the guests. That's better. Ah! I like the fact that you're taking control of the situation and even adapting the training a little bit, but you didn't give Sonny a chance to calm down. I think you need to be a little more patient with the training. Quiet, good girl, good, quiet, good. Oh, that's really good. It was a wonderful experience to sit down with Gail and have a conversation, and there was no barking. Well, that's good. I mean, this is such a difference. I can't believe it. But just when it appears Sunny has turned a corner, <laughs> suddenly she's back to square one. The biggest problem is when guests leave, it all goes south. <laughs> I can see that Sonny's still very nervous with people moving around, and we can work on that. But I think Gail is taking the training a little bit too fast. Fleetwood shouldn't be in the room until Sonny can cope with guests on a regular basis. Disappointed with Sonny's reaction to her mom, Gail wants to see how she copes with following other dogs around the neighborhood. <laughs> Sonny tested me a lot on the walk with the Victoria and Julie's dogs. There was a lot of barking, a lot of charging. She was wild. Maybe spread out a little bit. Look at that. It's obvious that Sonny isn't comfortable being in front of the group. I told you to walk her behind them until she's confident. I think I better get back to straighten things out. Victoria is returning to Gail and JB's home to straighten out some difficulties they've had while she's been gone. How are you? Thank you, I'm good. Good to see you. While Victoria gets settled, Gail uses her new removal technique with Sunny. Thank you. Good praise. I've been watching your progress. A couple of things I saw. Uh, first of all, on the walk. I think that was too close 
plus the fact that when you were walking in front, she didn't like the fact that these dogs were behind her right. and it freaked her out. Have them walk a little bit further away and have her follow more. Okay. And only then when she's okay, then can you come in a little bit. Okay. The biggest problem I see you having now is when people get up to go. And I'd like to tackle this outside. Victoria has asked a couple of Gail's friends to help address Sunny's nervous reaction to movement. One of her triggers is that she doesn't like it when people move. She doesn't like it when people walk away, because that's her time when she starts to feel real confident. Yeah. And she goes, I, I can chase you away. <laughs> and she barks at your heels. What I want you to do is I want you to just get up and walk off in that direction. Not yet. When, when I tell you, good girl. As that person is moving, I'm going to be working her brain. OK, here we go. Sunny's reacting when people leave seems to be her biggest problem. So it may be a little more challenging because it's so bad. All right, if you get up and move. Good. Sit. Good girl. Down. Good girl. Now, I would like you to do the same. She's aware that Ron was moving, but I kept working her. I was just working her. If you give a dog something else to do in the presence of a threatening stimulus, that means that dog will fear less because it's concentrating on something else. So now if you get up, Julian, walk away. Good girl, see it, see it, see it. Here, see, 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 see. good girl. Lovely. She knows they're moving, uh -huh. but there's something else for her to concentrate on. She would have reacted, but she didn't. So this is really good. My confidence went up a lot when Sunny responded as quickly as she did. And I felt so much better. I'm even more encouraged than I was before. If this is any indication of what it'll be like in a few months, this is going to be a real success. Yeah. Which I'm glad, you know. With Sunny showing much more confidence, Victoria feels she's ready to return to Gail's mom's house. The last time that Sonny and Fleetwood came into Gail's mum's house, it was absolute insanity. That was because there was a lot of new people here and there was also a dog. So this time, I want to reintroduce Sonny and Fleetwood to Gail's mum and her house, just with Gail's mum and no dog. What she'll probably do is she'll probably bark once she gets inside. Once she gets inside, just ignore that barking. Ignore okay. it. I don't know how Sonny's going to react in Gail's mum's house. I hope that we'll see a good reaction. Let him go. Let him go. You just ignore it. Don't even pay any attention to this. All right. That's it. That's better. Good. Good girl. With Gail ignoring her outburst, and without the presence of another dog, Sunny quickly calms down. OK. There we go. All right. She remembers who you are. Okay. She even came to say hello to you. I can't really believe good. it. Really I'm just good. amazed. Yeah. Yeah. This is unbelievable. Now, if you start to expose her more and more and more to new environments, she's not going to be so reactive when she goes to them because she's going to know them. And it's not going to be such a new thing. It's not going to be such a big deal. Right. Oh, I'm so much more excited and looking forward to family gatherings because I know that she can do it and she's gonna continue to improve. Every place I take her is gonna help her be even better. Oh my, here we are. Having reunited Gail with her family, Victoria's work is done, but the family's is just beginning. Good luck. You've still got a lot of work to do because she's a tough one. Yes. And she does have a lot of problems that have been deeply ingrained. Take it slow, even if it takes months, it doesn't matter to get her to the point where she can relax. Okay. Considering the progress that Sunny has made, I'm feeling really confident that one day I'll be able to do all the things I want to do with her and take her out and have her be more a part of my life. Bye-bye. See bye -bye. you. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. I feel completely confident leaving Gail and JB with their dogs now. They are on the right path. They've made massive, massive strides. The dogs are so much happier, and that's exactly how I wanted it to be. Since Victoria's been gone, the Thunderstorm program has worked really well. Put your nice wrap on. 
Sunny is a lot more comfortable during the storm. She doesn't immediately go run off and hide. That's my girl. Her ears are shaking this whole time, but she's paying attention to the training. She's still real jumpy, but she's a whole lot better than she was. Fleetwood's done a whole lot better. Come on. Like, you can walk him, and he doesn't start barking. And he's a whole lot calmer, especially training him separately from Sonny. Man, that was really good. But he'll actually come to me when I call him. He actually came back without even saying treat. Oh, no way. The socialization has been going really well. I've been able to have a lot of people come in. I'm going to have to go. All right, well, thanks for coming out. Enjoyed the visit. Yeah, me too. She did good. I think my mother is starting to be one of Sonny's friends. It's really nice to see. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.